Black Tree Crime is a podcast that researches and discusses murders committed by black offenders. It is a podcast that anyone and everyone is welcome to enjoy, but it may not be enjoyed by anyone and everyone. So listener discretion is advised. Now, without further ado, this is Black Tree Crime. Do not go gentle into that good night. Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. What's up? I'm Kayla. And I'm Kristen. And welcome to Black True Crime. If welcome, this is y'all. Your, <laughs> if this is your first time here at the show, welcome and hello. Give me a high sigh. I don't know if y'all know, but that's like my favorite thing to do. If you know where it comes from, let me know. Everyone should. We're just so happy to be here. We're sorry we're late. And <laughs> I was celebrating my birthday, y'all. Yeah, you know, y'all, this is almost a job, okay? <laughs> just give me it's definitely days a off. job for me. Krista doesn't do anything, mm. but we're working on that. One day you're going to say that one too many times. <laughs> and and you're really gone. not going to do nothing. <laughs> and everybody's going to be like, where did she go? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, we love you. Okay. Mm-hmm. And thank you guys for the birthday wishes. I saw them all, and yeah, I appreciate you. Before we get started, I do want to remind you guys that we're going to be in Dallas very soon. As of today, it's like a month and two days, three days. Yes. I super, like super crazy. Promoting it for half my life, and I'm so ready for it to just be here. <laughs> just have it. We're excited about it. We're going to have some special goodies for you guys for free to just pick up when you come see us. So please check out truecrimepodcastfestival.com. Get your tickets and hang out with us. Yeah. Come on in. And even if you don't go to the show or go to the festival, we're going to be celebrating Kristen's birthday in the city. So, yeah, just hit us up if you're around. Yeah. And like if you're from Dallas and you have any fun things you want to like mention, let me know about. Tell me now Mm -hmm. because I don't know what to do. (laughs) Okay, so this case was recommended by a listener. I cannot find her to save my life. I searched through my DMs high and low. So please message me so I can give you your credit. But yeah, I was shooketh by it. And you guys probably will be too. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. The state of a person's mental health can literally make or break their ability to live productively in society. But what happens if it deteriorates so much that you change from the one suffering to the one causing it? Join us as we discuss the tormented mind of Andre Lee Thomas. Mm, mm, mm. My name sounds familiar. I know, but I've never heard of it until it was mentioned like in my DMs. You know, shout out to my friend, please. Shout out for y'all coming know. in Black Your Crimes DMs. Shout out to that. <laughs> y'all be up and down our DMs and I fucking love it. So Andre Lee Thomas was born on March 17th, 1983 in Sherman, Texas. Kristen! What happened in, I don't even know what you did really, in black history that you want to share with us? In 1983. You never know. 1983. Well, hey guys. <laughs> I'm here and I'm, I'm with you as you are with me on this journey to 1983. Just so you know, <laughs> don't play with me. Every time. Okay. <laughs> um, I personally feel connected to this that I'm about to show y- tell y'all and many of us will because we've seen this movie so in 1983 Alice Walker mm. actually won the Pulitzer Prize for writing the book The Color Purple oh shit ding, ding. and she became the first African American woman to ever win the Pulitzer Prize so shout out to Alice Walker shout out girl shout out a little you. background and all of that Thank I love you. that. Yeah, like that's a boss move to write the color purple. And the way that she did it was so dope and so genuine and authentic. Yeah. And I don't think us people now today feel as deep as she felt. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So her inspiration came from wanting to draw closer to her family, the family that wasn't really a part of her life and that she had only heard stories about, like her grandmother yeah. and people from that generation. Mm-hmm. So she published the book in 1982. 
And basically, the book is a fictional story from the perspective of a black woman growing up in the early 1900s. She talks about her tumultuous life, the different experiences that happened in her life and the people around her. Mm -hmm. And it was basically in diary form. So it's actually journal entries of Mm -hmm. what this little girl, what this teenager, what this young woman and older woman are going through as their life progresses. I need to read that shit. I know. I was like, so how did they come up with this movie? But then I remembered like, okay, the movie is actually starts with the girl reading Mm -hmm. her freaking diary. I just never knew it was a diary. Oh, I love that, Kristen. Yeah. So if you guys haven't read The Color Purple or if you haven't watched the movie that Steven Spielberg collaborated with Alice at the time, and Mm -hmm. I think it was two years later to basically make this movie, I recommend that you at least watch the movie. And for those Mm -hmm. of us who have, me and you must never part. My king (laughs) die. Oh my gosh, Chris. Hey, no ocean. Hey, no (laughs) me. period Mm. well thank you so much sister for that trip down history lane Mm -hmm. so andre was born in sherman texas 1983 he was born to his parents danny and rochelle thomas and the couple along with their six children lived in a poor part of sherman they struggled so much in fact that their home often went without electricity Mm-hmm. This was probably common with a lot of black families back in the day. Yeah. A lot of families in general. Yeah. And to avoid some of the hardships he and his brother were experiencing at home, they would spend a lot of time at the Harmony Baptist Church close by. So they got like really involved into the Lord. And by hardships, I mean the fact that they struggled to make ends meet, their father wasn't around much, and their mother had been suffering from some type of mental illness issue. Mm. So I wasn't able to like find too much about it, but I did see that people close to her said they had to step up and like help her take care of the children because she really couldn't do it by herself. Wow. I wonder what she had. I know. That sounds really intense, though, to not be able to care for your kids. Like That seems like it had to be something mental health related or drugs related you know period and i I, or both Mm -hmm. people that knew andre said that despite having a difficult home andre always performed well in school he was actually known to memorize like entire bible stories and would be the first one to answer a question during sunday school so Mm, he was a survivor Mm -hmm. and he plugged himself deep into the church (laughs) deep into the church I mean, sometimes you need an anchor, you know, that keeps you fucking from losing it. Ah, every day I need an anchor. So (laughs) I can only imagine, but I'm glad he had the church to turn to in that time for him. Yeah. According to his dad, Andre was a tinkerer or Mm -hmm. somebody that always like was taking shit apart. And he said Andre had to know how everything worked. So in Mm -hmm. my head, I'm like, it's giving a little bit of like, autism maybe because you know autistic children have like incredible memories and they are meticulous about like a certain interest so or it's just giving inspirational awesome kid that despite what he's going through still has innocence and a desire to learn yeah that would be amazing if he wasn't showing other symptoms of things so we're gonna get to it Andre was also a really good artist. So by high school, he was like super talented drawing designs of cars that he said he actually wanted to, you know, make one day. It takes an intricate mind Mm -hmm. to go so technical, but then so creative at the same time by drawing these little bitty parts and and all the trinkets and go ahead for now. Go (laughs) ahead. I love him as a little kid. It's giving. Mm -hmm. So the people close to him expected him to be obviously successful and do great things in life. But unfortunately, that's not what happened. Here comes the trauma. Well, yeah, because first let's back up a little bit. Remember how I said Andre may have had like autism or been on the spectrum, at least in some form? Mm -hmm. Well, there were early signs that something was going on with Andre's mental health. At the age of 10, Andre was claiming that he was hearing voices telling himself to kill himself oh no yeah and at 10 years old he actually tried okay he must have been in hell for a 10 year old to be like this is too much 
I mean, who wouldn't? Someone is telling you to consistently kill yourself. It's a, it's only a matter of time where you actually start believing them. Yeah. And do it. Andre was arrested for the first time at age 11 for a criminal mischief charge pertaining to something he did at an apartment complex pool. And I'm mm. not sure what that means, but like at a pool, I just think something indecent happened. Being naughty. Mm-hmm. He was put on probation at 12, being required to report his proba- to his probation officer twice a week, but this was never actually enforced too much, and the case plan wasn't even signed by his parents. So Wow, okay. <laughs> I guess they just wrote it off as a kid being a kid. Which is sad, because he was actually going through mental illness. Like, full-blown. He needed to check in twice a week. Mm-hmm. For his own safety, bitch. And, and the everybody safety of others. Right. right. At 16, Andre was expelled from Sherman Independent School Districts. In June, one month after being expelled, Andre would attempt to take his life again. I mean, can you imagine? It just sounds like torture. Yeah. And he's acting out and nobody is listening. Nope, no one's doing anything. He scratched the skin off his wrist in an attempt to bleed out. Like, I don't, ugh, that's painful. It's you wanna, crazy. Why don't you just take a knife and, and do it fast? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, torture. If you're feeling tortured already, what is more torture for a, a little bit? 